the volume of exports has remained the same. Why can't Nigeria conduct oil block licensing when it should transparently so that the world can trust us? Every country I visited that had industrialized successfully found a way to implement or to attract funding into industrial infrastructure, industrial parks, special economic zones, logistics around. You know, it just found a way to do it. Whether it was government-led as in China or it was private sector-led, but you had to find a way to make sure that we achieve that. And then, of course, more broadly infrastructure. And again, this issue of how do you attract adequate infrastructure, knowing that our people are not waiting for us. So we can't say we'll do the infrastructure over the next 20, 30, 100 years. And the rate we're going at is simply not enough. You know, and I know that we need to do a lot more. I know that um, Dr. Teriba is here, and he's, this is an area of uh, great interest for him as well. Now, we also talk about the enterprise sector or the enterprises that are operating in Nigeria. What more can we do to help them? The micro, small, and medium enterprises. What can you do that will help them? What sort of interventions will help them? And we do line up some of the interventions that took place. The first one, uh, uh, growth and employment uh, program was by the World Bank, where we created, um, you know, um, we trained, you know, tens of thousands of entrepreneurs, uh, funded over um, close to a thousand of them, and we also have some technology innovation hubs. You then have um, these special or social intervention funds and uh, investment funds of the government or program of the government where you have this, um, you know, Jeep program and all, you know, market money, trader money, and all the other programs that were meant to help the most vulnerable in society. And, of course, there's Bank of Industry, which is a development bank that works in tandem with the central bank. But one of the most important areas that this government focused on was agriculture. And the central bank, I mean, provided a lot of funding for agriculture. And there is no question that there has been a boost in agriculture. But as you know, agriculture does primary production. And it's important that, like, there's a flow through from that primary to, you know, adding value. And that's where I think the economy needs a lot of um, coordination and a lot of, um, should I say, infrastructure build-up to make sure that the primary agriculture is not being wasted and to make sure that it's being channeled, not just to feed our people by getting to markets, but also turned into processed goods by adding value. And no country can develop just relying on primary agriculture just because of the powers of demand and supply. You find that like commodity prices by their very nature tend to be volatile. After a harvest happens at a particular time, and you need infrastructure to spread and even things out. When the government came in, you know, we, 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 we first had something that was called a strategic implementation plan, which was an attempt to arrest the immediate causes of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the difficulty we had. And then eventually, we then had the economic recovery and growth plan. What I have tried to do here is to highlight some of the important reform efforts of the government that were put in place, all of which are in progress, but I believe that it's, it's good to remind us. Um, one of the most important, and we haven't done enough, but there is a lot more to do, is the whole area of fiscal discipline. You know, if you look at, you know, the public finance reforms and the need to, frankly, create, um, you know, better public finances in terms of revenues in particular, that's something that, like, I, I would say is still work in progress. And then the issue of leakages in the public finances, you know, so things like the TSA, which was an attempt to have visibility to government revenues in full, things like the whistleblowing policy in terms of, our, of um, all, the, all the sort of um, issues of corruption and, and infractions that were taking place. Then the efficiency unit, which was an attempt to make government spending more efficient, and also the whole payroll system to make sure that the ghost workers issue was addressed. But I would say that like one of the most important that still needs to be addressed is the issue of revenue measures. You know, how do we make sure that we get our revenues up. And I have some ideas that I'll share with you on that. And then the importance of the states and how do you make sure that the, the revenue, or sorry, the, um, should I say, the fiscal stat, state of the states or the revenues of the states were shored up in a way that they could meet their obligations. The second dimension of the reforms that took place were around the enabling environment. How do you create a better environment for businesses to do well? Um, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council was heavily focused on that, and there were several action plans. We're just dealing with the fourth one now. And then the foreign exchange reforms, which um, the governor talked about. How do you create better supply of foreign exchange so that you're not just looking at demand management, which was where we started from. But it, was, it soon became clear that demand management was 
not sufficient to address the foreign exchange crisis. And the whole um, import-export window was an attempt to create supply. And by the admission of the central bank, that supply actually rebalanced the equation in a way that will achieve more stability. And then, of course, there is the whole question of how do you give incentives to investors, you know, to invest here versus the other options they have, investing somewhere else. <laughs>